Doctors at a Florida hospital were faced with a very difficult decision when an unconscious man arrived in the ER. The tattoo that he had read, do not resuscitate. The word not was underlined. You may all have heard this story. This was a 70 year old patient, had an elevated blood alcohol level, a history of very poor health, no identification, arrived with no family or friends. So all the doctors had was this tattoo. Doctors clearly perplexed, weren't sure what to do. And, and I will say this, doctors are almost always going to err on the side of over-treatment. But this guy turned out had COPD, diabetes, atrial fibrillation. So the docs, unsure what to do, actually brought in the ethics committee. And the ethics team advised them to honor that tattoo that it did express an authentic preference. This is another example of not a lot of great precedent in terms of what to do here. I think this was the right decision if, because I it mean, turned out that he did have a formal DNR. Mm -hmm. It took them, of course, time to get it. But, but what would you have? I think they were on a, a very slippery slope. You know, the law in every state allows us to consent to a DNR, but every state has specific requirements, uh, whether it's two signatures or a notary. So I think the hospital did the right thing only because they were able to dig up a... But that was, a, a, well, no, that was they, after no, the fact. But they had information that one existed. So often a family member in a hospital would say, oh, he does have a health care proxy or he did consent to a DNR. As an ER doctor, I can tell you almost always people show up. If you're unconscious in cardiac arrest, no one knows who you are, you never just have a DNR order hanging out in your right. back pocket. So this happens over and over again. And so often, because we always err on the side of overtreatment, there's no formality other than this piece of paper that almost no one ever has, right. unless you're in the hospital that you regularly go to, or you come into the hospital from a nursing home or some other facility. This happens over and over again. and and. I almost feel like we, this case may actually prod us to further think about what, what would be something that you could have on person at all times. We have medical bracelets, bracelets. now. I love the bracelets. I do too. I love the bracelet because you can take the bracelet off. You know, what are you gonna do if you change your mind about the DNR? They right. say it would take eight to 10 treatments at 150 bucks a pop. So maybe I just take a Sharpie and put an X through it or, or cover it with electrical tape. I, I mean, it's uh, silly on the one hand, but I agree with you, it's caused us to think about it and I think a bracelet. I have patients write messages to me on sh with sharpies all the time really? like make them perfect please. Make them perfect <laughs> and, then you, and then you do so you listen you to that. You make them perfect but, and I will love you doctor. But I, this, is, <laughs> this is interesting because in a review of the literature they did find an instance where someone had a DNR tattoo but it was no longer their intent. Too often the worlds of medicine and law do not intersect at a happy place because here's the other reality. You know, in our country, a ton of resources and dollars I know are where spent you're going. In, I do. in what we call feudal care, which it turns out most patients often don't want. And it's because Defensive we have a very medicine. hard time fulfilling the wish of someone who doesn't want things done to them. And so if you are someone who does not want resuscitation, you do, you have to carry it in your purse, on your person at all times, because at this point in time, it's the only way you know your wishes will be. But I, I think- That's such a great point. We're damned if we do and we're damned if we a, don't. No, no, we have an obligation as a doctor to do it, but you're, you're getting into it that if yes. we do it and we save somebody who did not want to be resuscitated, a big bill is generated. I, I think the, con the, the converse gets is more troubling. And I think the elephant in the room are the rotten attorneys and the malpractice. So my advice to medical providers, you know, my husband's an MD and every morning I tell him as he's leaving, don't get sued today.